Greetings in Jesus name. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. I'm so glad to see each and every one of you who are part of this community and who've been learning over here on our YouTube channel week after week. We are excited for you to grow along with us. Every Sunday morning, we have our Sunday services from our church here in Bangalore being streamed at 11 a.m. Don't miss the time of the worship and the word that comes to you week after week. In the days ahead, we'd love to bring you teachings from the places where we go to travel and minister at Ashwell. Make sure to turn on the notifications icon so that uh, whenever there is a fresh content posted on this channel, it comes to you, that you're notified about it. We are so excited to bring you content that will bring life to you, that will encourage you, that will take you to the next level in your walk with God, in your faith, in your journey, in your relationships, in every aspect of your life. Today, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about healing. You know, the Bible says that God forgives all of our sins and He heals all of our sicknesses. But sometimes we limit our experience with God just to the forgiveness of sins and we don't receive the healing of our sicknesses, the healing of our infirmities. We don't ask Him to heal us. And that is a very sad thing. Today, I pray that all of us, we will expect to walk in the wholeness, the completeness of healing in our bodies. The Lord wants us to walk in healing. The Lord wants us to walk in freedom. The Lord wants us to walk in the fullness of health. So today I'm going to give you five keys that are going to be instrumental for you to pursue God in experiencing healing in your bodies. If you can just hold on to these five keys and just allow the Lord to use these principles to give you an in-depth revelation of who God is and His plans for your life, you will never have to continue to remain in sickness again in your entire life. The first key is the key of faith. We have to understand that we cannot be healed beyond our faith. If we don't believe that God can heal us, if we don't trust that God wants to heal us, if we don't believe that it is God's will for us to walk in healing, then we will never expect it from God. And when we have no faith, God cannot move, even if it is God's desire to heal us. God cannot heal us when we don't have faith. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 29. Let this be done to you according to your faith. He was in fact healing a couple of blind men. And he didn't say, let it be done to you according to my power or my strength. It said, according to your faith. If Jesus had to say that to you today, will you be healed? According to your faith, do you have the faith to be healed? Do you really trust that God wants to heal you? I'm not asking you if you uh, want God to heal you. I'm not asking you if you have the desire to be well. I'm asking you if you have the faith to be well. See, some of us, we have a earnest desire to do certain things. We have a Uh, hunger for certain things, but we don't believe that we will ever be able to do those things. And that's the difference between desire and faith. Desire for healing is different, but what we need today is a faith for healing, a, a ability to really believe that this is God's will for me and I am healed through Jesus. I will walk in the fullness of health and the fullness of healing in my life. And this is a statement that we need to be able to make in the worst days of our lives. There may be times when this belief system may be tested. There may be times when this faith may be questioned, sometimes by people, sometimes because of our circumstances, sometimes because of our sicknesses. And in those days as well, you need to make sure that your faith will be on point. Because without faith, it is impossible for us to please God, impossible to impress God, impossible to touch His heart without our faith. Today, the Lord Jesus is looking at us and saying, let it be done to you according to your 
faith. The second thing that is very important is our willingness to meditate on scripture. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 22 that you need to attend to my words. God is telling us you need to give ear to every word that I have spoken because when you do it, they will be life to your body and health to your flesh. Your flesh, your physical body, it can be made whole, it can be made healthy depending on how earnestly, how consistently you go into reading the scripture, you go into meditating on the scripture, you go into understanding the scripture, you go into obeying the scripture. Now, these are not just scriptures that talk about healing. Because sometimes when we want a healing, we will pick up all the verses in the Bible that talks about healing and we'll just stick to that. But do you know that the entire scripture from Genesis to Revelation, it is inspired by God. It is breathed by God. It carries life in it. So it is not possible for us to read life, to eat life, to meditate on life and then continue to have death prevail in our bodies. The Bible says this word that you are giving attention to, it will be health to your flesh, health to your body, health to your organs, health to your bones, health to your nerve systems, health to each and every aspect of running your physical body. The third thing that is very important for us to understand is that God has placed us in a church. God has placed us in a community. And sometimes it's necessary for us to walk in close proximity with this community to see the healing manifested in our life. James chapter 5 and verse 14. James would say, when there is a sick person in your church, he needs to visit the elders, which means he needs to have a good relationship with his elders and he needs to be in alignment to the leadership of the church. So he needs to visit the elders so that the elders can anoint him with oil and pray for him. Now, we've taken this verse out of context to mean that if we pray with oil, God will heal us. But it was not just about the physical element of oil. It was about the fact that the oil always flows from the head to the top. In the Old Testament, when the priests, when they would be anointed, the oil will be poured on their head. And like it says in Psalms, the oil will flow and, and it will begin to drip from Aaron's beard all the way down to the feet, all through his body. It will be soaked in that oil. Now, this oil is something that your elders, they carry. God has given them the grace, the, the anointing, the wisdom to help you walk in the fullness of your health. Now, when you go and submit yourself to your leaders and you come under their authority and you say, I am sick. These are the areas of struggle in my life. I need you to help me. I need you to pray for me. When you Commit yourself to that. When you submit yourself to that oil, you will see that the oil that is upon your elders will begin to flow into your life. The anointing, the breakthrough, the healing, everything that is given to your elders will now be manifested in your life. So the principle of the oil is as important as this principle of scripture and the key of faith. The fourth thing that I want to explain to you is the concept of honor. Now, there are times when I may not have enough faith to see a healing in my life. But if I see someone else who has the faith, who has the anointing, I can just tap into their faith by investing my honor into them. We know the story of this uh, woman who had the issue of blood. This is in Matthew chapter 9. And she said to herself, this is her own reasoning in verse 21. She said, if only I could touch the edge of the cloak that Jesus is wearing, I will be healed. She's not even saying I need a meeting with Jesus or I need some time with Jesus. No, she's like, 
I don't care about anything. If only I can just come in close proximity with Jesus, enough to touch the edge, one robe, one centimeter of his cloth, the edge, one tiny touch. That's all that it takes. So it was not focused on herself. It was all focused on the person that Jesus was. In fact, Jesus himself wasn't preparing to heal this lady, but her honor was so much that it drew healing out of Jesus. You know the story of another man, uh, the Roman centurion, who sent word to Jesus for the healing of his servant. The Bible says Jesus went to heal uh, this guy. And on the way, the, the man wrote to, sent a message to Jesus saying, don't come to my house. I don't need you to come. I just need you to send a word. If you can just speak. And Jesus was amazed. He was like, I have not seen faith like this in all of Israel. That was the kind of honor that this Roman centurion invested into Jesus. And sometimes we, what our faith cannot do, our honor can do. So in this season, when you see that someone else has walked into a particular healing, Let's say that someone has been healed from cancer or someone has had a spiritual gift of healing. You need to know how to invest honor into their lives. You don't have to glamorize the whole thing. It doesn't even have to be on social media. It doesn't have to catch public attention. It could be as simple as you saying, I'm going to go and touch the edge of his robe. Or I'm going to just allow him to send a word, a text message, uh, something that will come and touch my life. I'm just going to get in contact with this person. I'm not saying that this is the only way I'll be healed. I'm saying that I want to honor the man or the woman that God has already used for healing or the man or the woman who have already received that healing. I'm going to be in close proximity with this person and I know that my honor it can open up things for me the fifth thing that is very necessary for us to understand is that God he also works in a time frame a season a moment one moment one moment the Bible says in Luke chapter 5 verse 17 that Jesus he was teaching the Pharisees and when he was teaching, he was ministering to them. He was opening up scriptures in a way that they will understand it. It says that the power of God to heal was present upon Jesus. Which means that there were other times when Jesus was teaching, when that particular power to heal was not necessarily there all the time. It's, it's exclusively mentioning this particular time when the power to heal was on Jesus. How often has that power, has that time, has that season come nearby you and you've missed it? You know the story of this uh, man by the pool of Bethsaida. He would say, every time the angel would come, there is a movement that is created, but there is nobody out there to push me into the pool and then he will miss his moment. My prayer for you is that you will not miss your moment with God. You will not miss that encounter with God. So don't take any services in your church or anything that comes by your way for granted because God can encounter you when you are least expecting it. God can touch your life when you're least asking for it, that encounter can now be yours. You know the story of how Jesus healed this woman with a withered hand. She didn't come asking for healing. She was just in church on that day when Jesus was preaching. Now, this was her habit. This was like a usual tendency for this woman to come to church every Sunday. But this Sunday, Jesus happened to visit the church. And this Sunday happened to be the service where Jesus would call her out and say, Come to me, woman, you are healed. Woman, you are loosed. And this lady, she never expected this healing. So my desire, my prayer is that you will not miss that God moment. So many people, when we pray for them, we realize that their season for healing was there. And yet, 
They missed that healing. They missed that season because they were out of where God wanted them to be planted, where God wanted them to be rooted, and because of which they missed what God was doing in their life. But that's not going to be your case. You're different. The first principle is faith. The second is scriptures. The third is the principle of oil. The fourth is the principle of honor. And the fifth is the principle of the movement. So if you can aggressively pursue these five things. I'm not going to pray for healing on this video, but I believe that your pursuit of this healing is going to bring forth results, even without me having to pray for you, even without someone having to lay hands on you physically. When you activate these principles, wherever you are, you will be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you for tuning in today. Let us know your testimonies of healing in the comments below. We'd love to hear and celebrate along with you. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you.